putting everything out in social media is very important for the engagement to be building in. The hashtag that we are using is CNN News 18 Town Hall. So please continue to tweet, put it out on your social media handles so that we get enough and ample traction that is required. Now remember this is just the first leg of the town hall edition that started from the national capital here in Delhi as far as this year 2023 is concerned and in the run up to the general elections in 2024 we are going to be having more such town halls so we are going to be traveling to different cities across the country it is going to be a roving edition of the town hall so let's wait and see where do we go to next? So all excited to actually bring to you more and more such important conversations on this very platform that is the CNN News 18 Town Hall. Ladies and gentlemen, let's now move forward to our next panel discussion which brings together two distinguished individuals from different political spectrums. Both firebrand speakers so please welcome Mr. Sudhanshu Trivedi, a member of parliament from the Bharatiya Janata Party and Mr. Manish Tiwari, a member of parliament from the Congress Party and also former union minister. And moderating this session will be our managing editor, Mr. Zaka Jacob. Thank you very much, uh, Sudhanshu Trivedi ji, Manish Tiwari ji. Thank you very much uh, for joining us on the CNN News 18 Town Hall. The topic is Road to 2024, and we couldn't have thought of a better time because today all roads seem to be going to either the Town Hall or to Bangalore. 26 opposition parties, Dr. Trivedi, are in Bangalore today and tomorrow. They are saying numerically, arithmetically, wo BJP se bada hai aur zyada hai. Isko aap kaise take on karenge? Arithmetically, the numbers are more than the opposition. Ke paas hi hai. Uh, those who are going to Bangalore, this is not happening for the first time, if you remember in 2018. The same scenario was there, rather than much bigger scenario was there. I'll, I'll, you can take this one. Whatever is happening in Bangalore, it is not happening for the first time. If you remember, just before the previous election in 2018, the same scenario was there. Rather than a much bigger scenario was there, so many leaders were there, if you remember, joining hands and giving a big rally. And Bangalore is known for aerospace industry. So their plane took off, but it landed nowhere. And finally what happened is, Dilke tukde hazar huye, koi yahan gira, koi wahan gira. So finally, I just want to say, there is a, when they are doing in Bangalore, it's having a much more significance. Because Bangalore is considered to be the intellectual capital of India. And those younger generation, the millennium generation, who are intelligent enough to understand that who is going to lead the country on which road. Prime Minister has given a very clear, crystal clear view for the next 25 years. The Amrit Kal, that how we want to make India economic, number one economy of the world with our heritage, pride of our heritage, strong and robust national security. On the other hand, I would just like to say, previously they met in Patna yeah. on 23rd of June. On the same day, 23rd of June, Prime Minister was there in America. And Prime Minister was busy in ensuring various defense deals, whether it was GE engines to be manufactured here for the fighter planes or semiconductors or predator drones. So he was there to have the defense deal to uphold the security of the country and there was also a defense deal in Patna going on. That was defense deal of whom? To cover up the corruptions of one another, to defend the corruptions of one another, and you remember who was there? Waha pe the, koila ghotale wale bhi the, tuji wale bhi the, sharab ghotale wale bhi the, bharti ghotale wali bua ji bhi thi. Or the chairmanship was of the chara ghotala. And so that was an other defense deal to defend their okay. corruption and defend their family. But 
उनकी जो स्ट्रेंथ है वो उतनी ही मजबूत थी जितनी वो पुल की थी बिहार के जो गिर गया और अब तो उनका मांझी भी छोड़ के चला गया सो आई थिंक द फेट ऑफ देयर पाथ इज वेरी मच विजिबल तो इन कंट्रास्ट टू द पाथ शोन बाई प्राइम मिनिस्टर श्री मोदी सो मनीष तिवारी यू नो फॉर द वोटर्स ऑफ इंडिया the bjp it's very clear you have one leader in mr modi their policies are very clear what is it that the opposition is offering let's start with the question of leadership who is the leader of this you know bunch of 26 parties that have come together in bangalore and what what do these parties stand for <clears throat> the essence of any democracy is change change itself brings about a renewal regeneration and rejuvenation of the democratic experiment per se so therefore the first and the the first principle of any functional democracy is that it should be amenable to a regular change of government it keeps the life blood of democracy pulsating through the veins of the republic number 2 when you talk about alliances we are talking about an alliance meeting which is taking place in bengaluru there's another alliance meeting which is taking place in delhi right so therefore there are 30 odd parties which are up coming together under the nda rubric in uh, in new delhi tomorrow yeah. so therefore there is a juxtaposition of two contrasting alliances and if the bjp would have been all that comfortable as they claim to be there wouldn't have been this panic and uh, panic almost bordering on paranoia uh, in order to try and create or recreate the national democratic alliance for which they have not cared over the past 9 years so to answer your question the opposition which is coming together is doing so in order to offer a principled democratic alternative to this country i do not want to get into the hyperbole of what my dear friend mr sudanshu trivedi uh, just articulated suffice to say that over the past 9 years all the charges that they hurled at the erstwhile upa how many convictions have been there he talked about 2g has there been a single conviction in 2g he talked about various other things you see it is very very easy to level allegations it's extremely easy to go ahead and register firs against people because in this country the process is the punishment but ultimately does all that vendetta does all that persecution really stand in a court of law and the answer is very self evident in the past 9 years because it was all built on a castle of sand it has not stood in a court of law so okay so 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 essentially the opposition has come together to offer an alternative there would be a common minimum program there would be a leadership which would uh, manifest itself and you would see as we go towards 2024 or as we travel on the road to 2024 a lot of questions that you are asking would self evidently crystallize so sudanshu ji uh, just one example manish tiwari just said that you know uh, what is the desperation to revive the nda kal ko nda ka meeting hoga yahan pe uh, let me just give the example of jo maharashtra mein hua what was the need to take on ajit pawar on board till the other day till a few weeks ago you were accusing ajit pawar of corruption wo jo video tha chakki piecing wala wo to viral bhi ho gaya uh, is the bjp becoming whatever it is accusing the congress of having uh, become uh, whatever has happened in maharashtra this was a solely internal matter of the ncp and the same thing happened in shiv sena the problem is as uh, my dear friend mr manish tiwari was saying he was asking about the democracy and all those parties they claim that they are the champions of democracy but unfortunately they are those parties who represents dynasty in their own party no not even an iota of democracy it is to be decided firmly right from birth that this person will lead the party and then they become the champions of democracy so the problem is 
हमारे यहां पार्टी को परिवार समझते हैं और वो परिवार को पार्टी समझ लेते हैं एंड हियर स्टार्ट द प्रॉब्लम एंड दैट्स हाउ शिवसेना इंटर्ड इन टू द प्रॉब्लम दैट्स हाउ एनसीपी इंटर्ड इन टू द प्रॉब्लम सो इट इज द सोनली इंटरनल मैटर एंड एज फार एज द अदर्स आर कंसर्न आई वुड लाइक टू कोर्ट दैट द फर्स्ट कोलिशन गवर्नमेंट विच कंप्लीटेड इट्स फुल टर्म वॉज लेड बाई बीजेपी ड्यूरिंग अटल बिहारी वाजपेयी जी स्टिनो सो वी हैव क्रिएटेड अ पैराडाइम शिफ्ट इन द इंडियन पॉलिटिक्स बिफोर दैट नन ऑफ द कोलिशन गवर्नमेंट नाइदर इन द स्टेट नॉट एट सेंटर इज एबल टू कंप्लीट द टर्म एंड द फर्स्ट गवर्नमेंट अदर देन कांग्रेस हु गॉट अ क्लियर मेजोरिटी ऑन इट्स ओन इट वॉज इन टू थाउजेंड फोर्टीन एंड अगेन इन टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन बाई श्री नरेंद्र मोदी सो अगेन वी हैव क्रिएटेड अ पैराडाइम शिफ्ट एंड अदर पैराडाइम शिफ्ट फॉर डिस्पाइट गेटिंग अ क्लियर मेजोरिटी बोथ द टाइम ऑन इट्स ओन वी हैव टेकन ऑल द एलाइज विद अस with a proper respect no, and the, we the, have not left anybody they have left the, the reason, and whosoever has left us you can see the, the reason why people are asking this question is yes mr modi got an unprecedented mandate 2014 may then 2019 may if you are so confident about 2024 to fir akali dal ke sath kyun charcha ho rahi hai i think tdp ke sath bhi charcha ho rahi hai are all these parties going to come back to nda doesn't this show that up numbers pe confident nahi hai dekhiye एक बात बहुत क्लियर है जब मोदी जी के नेतृत्व में भारत बहुत क्लैरिटी के साथ आगे बढ़ता हुआ दिख रहा है तो बहुत से लोगों को लगता है कि नाउ दिस इज द वे वेर इंडिया इज डेस्टिन टू बी एंड दैट्स हाउ मोदी जी हैज क्रिएटेड अ सिचुएशन इन विच फॉर द थ्री कंजर्वेटिव इयर्स ही हैज बीन रेटेड द नंबर वन लीडर इन ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू से वन एग्जाम्पल कैन यू कोट अ सिंगल कंट्री इन द वर्ल्ड इन विच टूडे Russia says says that India is our traditional ally and US says that India is our strategic ally it has happened only under the leadership of prime minister shri narendra modi can you quote a single instance in which during the yemen war the both warring factions agreed to stop the fighting for 2 hours for which the indian planes can go so from international level and can you quote a single instance in the entire history of the country when 48 crore people have got jandan account another example i would like to give if 4 crore people have got pradhan mantri awas yojana out of 4 crore in 3 crore women are having the joint ownership of the party and most of sorry the joint ownership of the property and in most of the cases they are only belong to the poor classes i can say with challenge ki isse pehle kabhi 3 crore garib auraton ke haath mein malikana hak nahi hoga ki kagaj pe registry unka naam ho this so, is the change which has been so so manish tiwari let's talk about you know what is it's the year of india's g20 presidency we've had over 100 plus meetings that india has chaired as part of the chairmanship uh you've just seen the kind of reception that the prime minister received first in america then in france at a time when india's stock itself seems to be going up and up in the world and and credit where credit is due some of it goes to mr modi's leadership what what is the opposition offering in terms of an alternative what what is it that the people of india uh, you're offering to them as an alternative let me answer uh Mr Trivedi and uh, the questions that you have asked in a chronological order so danshu ji recounted some of the successes of the so called coalition arrangements they've been a part of let me recount some of the failures you know it starts with the svd alliance in 1967 the failed janata experiment in 1977 the failed national front experiment in 1989 and of course the failed experiment of 1996 and 1998 and in fact at a point in time when there used to be ideology in indian politics in fact uh, the bjp or its earlier avatar the jansang you know surmounted that uh, very very uh, very skillfully to even align with the communists in their quest for anti congressism so therefore while uh, he may have recounted some successes of coalition you know they, those successes came after a long string of failures so therefore that is just setting the historical record straight number 2 in so far as natural ally and strategic ally is concerned i think we broke that paradigm way back in 1989 itself the fact remains that when the global reset was initiated by the 
then Congress government in 1991 after the collapse of Eastern Europe and uh, the erstwhile Soviet Union, we were able to very, very skillfully actually reach out and reset a relationship with the United States of America while maintaining the traditional relationship with Russia, not only alive, but actually we rejuvenated it periodically over a period of time. The difficulty with the BJP is that it feels that history started on the 23rd of uh, May 2014, but actually history started a long time back because the fact is that most of these things, especially when you talk about statecraft or diplomacy, they are a continuum in themselves. And you've had governments, you know, which have continuously built on it. You, you talked about the U.S. relationship. Now, the reset with the U.S. was actually initiated by uh, Mr. Jaspan Singh under uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Vajpayee's government when he had that dialogue with Strobe Talbot. The NSSP was done by the then uh, NDA BJP government. Dr. Manmohan Singh's government, you know, picked up the ball. And you had the uh, Indo-US civil nuclear deal, a paradigm that you've no not been able to reach ever since then. And so, therefore, in certain areas, governments, you know, rise above partisan differences and ensure that national interest is kept on a premium, it is kept on a priority. So therefore, to try and nitpick and score brownie points in areas where every government has contributed, I do not think is a very fair way of approaching something as serious as national security, uh, diplomacy, and statecraft. To finally conclude and answer your question, as I was earlier pointing out, the opposition is going to offer an alternative vision for both the development of India, which promotes equity, which reduces the gross income inequality, which has become the swan song of the NDA BJP years over the past, uh, over the past nine years. What you have seen is actually a concentration of wealth in a very, very few hands with a lot of people either being put on dole or not having opportunities in, e, e, to be e, even able to keep their body and soul together. So therefore, the fundamental principle where democracy thrives is when you have income equality. And income equality to ensure that the fruits of economic development reach the last person in the last row would be one of the priorities and as we go forth, you will find a whole alternative program of development, a whole alternative vision for this country being articulated and put before the country. Okay. Uh, Sudhanshu ji, for the BJP, historically, the three biggest issues were Ram Mandir, uh, Article 370 abrogation, and of course, UCC, the Uniform Civil Code. UCC ki baat kafi, uh, kafi charcha ho rahi hai but na koi draft hai, na koi basis hai, and how many people will you exempt? You'll exempt the tribals, you'll exempt the northeast. So kya hai UCC ke ko lekar aapka kya hai? What is your vision? What are the, what are the details? What are the, the modalities? Uh, first, I would like to answer just in brief what he has said. He said that in 1991 when the Eastern Bloc has crippled and then at the time government of India has changed. I would just like to remind two instances. They were saying that they were having equally good relation with the Russia and America. 1994, Russia backtracked giving us the third stage cryogenic engine. You know, in 1995, Narasimha Rao government was all set to perform the nuclear test and it was America who stopped. So this was our equal relationship with Russia and America. And today, we are getting S-400 from Russia and first outside NATO country to all set to get predator drones. So that is how we have dealt equivalent balance with them and that's how. And one more thing, I will agree to him. So previous governments have also done several very good steps like the present transition of the 
economy was done by Narsimha Rao government, shedding away the Nehruvian economy. But unfortunately, those who have done significant work, whether it was Sri Lal Bahadur Shastri, who started the nuclear program, and Sri P.V. Narsimha Rao, who has transformed the economy, were not given due legitimate uh, dignity which was to be given to them. Now, coming on these three issues. You have said a very good thing. These three issues were in our agenda since our previous avatar, Jansang 1951. And you cannot quote a single manifesto of Bharati Janta Party in which all these three things are not there. So, ye is baat ka praman hai ki we have never changed our stand on our basic point. And with due humility, I would like to ask, quote a single political party. हमने बहत्तर साल में कोई स्टैंड चेंज नहीं किया आप बताइए कोई पार्टी जिसने बहत्तर साल में चार बार अपना स्टैंड ना चेंज किया हो ऑन द कोर इश्यूज लाइक ऑन द इश्यू ऑफ राम टेंपल इफ यू रिमेंबर इट वाज श्री पीवी नरसिम्हा राव एज प्राइम मिनिस्टर हेड सेट हम बाबरी मस्जिद दोबारा तामिल करेंगे एंड मुलायम सिंह यादव एज चीफ मिनिस्टर सेट बाबरी मस्जिद दोबारा तामिल करेंगे नाउ दे से नहीं वी वेलकम वी वेलकम एवरीबडी एक्सेप्ट दैट द राम मंदिर शुड बी देयर सो दिस इज द चेंज बट वी वर स्टैंडिंग अगेंस्ट द ऑर्ड्स and we are standing here also we said 370 will be abrogated we have done it if you look after 2019 when we got certain strength in rajya sabha whether it was triple talaq halala hat subsidy several things have happened we tried to make india a truly secular country with an equal opportunity to everybody on the on the lighter note mai kehna chahunga after the demolition of the disputed structure in 1993 elections of four state we were unable to form the government in uttar pradesh sp bsp congress together managed to form the government though we were the biggest party to us samay ek nara laga tha mile mulayam kashi ram hawa mein ud gaye jai shri ram to at the time one of our leader has said ki this is been slogan is been raised because your unity and strength you were not able to portray your full strength and unity The day you will portray the full strength and unity, उस दिन जो कहते हैं कि मिले मुलायम काशी राम हवा में उड़ गए जय श्री राम उस दिन नारा हो जाएगा क्या मुलायम का काशी राम सारे बोलेंगे जय श्री राम और आज आप देखिए यू नेम ए सिंगल पोलिटिकल पार्टी विच इज अपोजिंग राम टेम्पल एंड जस्ट थर्टी ईयर्स बैक यू नेम ए सिंगल पोलिटिकल पार्टी अदर देन बीजेपी हु आर सपोर्टिंग राम टेम्पल सर दैट्स हाउ द हिस्ट्री इज क्रिएटेड हम वो नहीं है जो हवा के साथ बहते हैं वो मोदी जी के लिए कहना चाहूंगा अंगार हार उनका जिनकी सुनहाक समय रुक जाता है आदेश जिधर कर देते हैं इतिहास उधर मुड़ जाता है मनीष तिवारी ऑन ऑन यू सी सी यू ट्वीटेड अबाउट दिस इज वेल वाई वॉट इज द केस फॉर नॉट हैविंग ए कॉमन सेट ऑफ लॉज फॉर सिविल मैटर्स लाइक मैरिज डिवोर्स एडॉप्शन एक्सेट्रा फॉर ऑल इंडियन रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ दियर रिलीजन यू सी द डिफिकल्टी विद द बीजेपी इज दैट इट पेज लिप सर्विस टू द यूनिफॉर्म सिविल कोड it does not understand what a uniform civil code means there if you read article 44 of the constitution it talks about a uniform civil code it doesn't talk about a common civil code there is a fundamental distinction between a uniform civil code and a common civil code when dr ambedkar if you go back to the constituent assembly debates introduced article 44 which is a non binding a directive principle of state policy the wording that was used was that the state shall endeavor to have a uniform civil code throughout the territory of india what does that mean it means that there will be certain egalitarian principles which will underpin every personal law <coughs> with regard to inheritance with regard to gender equity with regard to uh succession with regard to property rights and in fact it was the upa government between 2004 and 14 which really brought about progressive legislation which ensured uh, gender equity especially with regard to inheritance laws and so therefore if the bjp was so very clear about what uniform civil code means they won't be going around saying that we'll uh, exempt the tribals we'll exempt the christians right so if you're going to exempt the tribals you're going to exempt the christians when well, why will you not exempt the muslims why will you not exempt the sikhs do you think the sikh community is going to accept 
that the Anand Marriage Act, which they fought for, and you know, we had amendment in 2012, that is going to be abrogated and replaced by a common law. And in any case, you have a voluntary uniform civil code in this country. And that voluntary uniform civil code is the Special Marriages Act 1954, read along with the Indian Succession Act. So it is not as if India does not have a uniform civil code, that is a voluntary opt-in. Unfortunately for them, a uniform civil code is really a dog whistle. I can elaborate on that, but we are running out of time. And two more things which I would like to say. The story with regard to Article 370 is not over. Since I'm counsel in that matter and the Supreme Court is going to start hearing it from the 2nd of August on a daily basis, till the time the court does not adjudicate on the constitutionality of it, the story with regard to the illegal abrogation of 370 and for the first time in the constitutional history of India, turning a state into two union territories, that story is not over what happened on 5th and 6th of August 2019 in both houses of parliament was a constitutional traversity which is being adjudicated and on Ram Mandir let me finally say <coughs> Dr. Trivedi talked about changing stances our stance has been very clear from day one we said that the matter will be adjudicated by the highest court and whatever the court decides will be acceptable and that's exactly what we have done so therefore you know it's very easy to really make these hyperbole allegations of trying to run with the hare and hunt with the hound without really getting into the nitty-gritty of it. I would really commend to the BJP that they should revisit what exactly do they mean when they talk about a uniform civil code. Okay, uh, we have four uh, can minutes. I, can yeah, I quote quickly, sir, yeah. quickly. I just quoting his leaders. Jawaharlal Nehru in 1956 giving an interview to a Hungarian journalist Timor Monde. He is written in his book, Nehru's View, India and Others. He talks about common civil code. And then Nehru said, confidently, I have decided for Hindus, now they cannot have uh, two marriages, succession and others. Then he asked, what about the Muslims? The world of I cannot dare to think about that. It is the world I cannot dare. Then he asked, why? Because I want that they should remain with their, uh, their religious beliefs and others. Then he says, if the Turkey can do, why can't you? He said, no, no, that's a Muslim country, but we are a Hindu majority country. We do not want to touch. It is Nehru. And now during the Rajiv Gandhi time, when Shabano case came, Arif Sahab himself has told it that one of the cabinet ministers of Rajiv Gandhi government has asked him, why you are opposing Shabano case? Then he told, because I am thinking that this is taking Muslims backward. So he was saying that the cabinet minister of Rajiv Gandhi government said, Muslim gutter mein padhe rehna chahte hai, tunhe padhe rehen do, tum ki unki chakkar mein padh rahe ho. And that's how I would just put a data in 1931 census. The rate of literacy of India was 8 to 10 percent. In Uttar Pradesh, the most literate community of the Hindus, it was a caste based census. Brahmins were having 15 percent and Sayyid Muslims 24 percent rate of literacy. But in 67 years they have come down to the stage of such a commission and this. Isi liye kehte hai na, kisi ko kisi ki mohobbat ne maara, kisi ko kisi ki adawat ne maara, sharafat ali ko secular siyasat ne maara. Marish. Well, uh, I have nothing to say. He's just validated the charge of a dog whistle. If the BJP is so confident about a uniform civil code, let them come with a draft of a uniform civil code. You see, ultimately, when you talk about a uniform civil code, are you going to do away with the uh, entire concept of an HUF, the Hindu undivided family, right? Or are you then going to allow a Muslim undivided family, a Christian undivided family, a Jain undivided family, you know, as taxing mechanisms in your tax laws? <clears throat> Are you then going to ensure that the exceptions which have been built into the Hindu Marriage Act itself to allow for certain customary marriages to take place, which do not invalidate the marriage or the whole concept of spinda marriages are you going to do away with that so therefore you know it's very easy to do this dog whistling i challenge the bjp to come up with a draft of a uniform civil code which is actually uniform in character if if 
they could have conceptualized a draft, their leaders would not be going and saying that we are exempting the tribals, we are exempting the Christians, we are exempting X and Y. The simple reason for that is that A also know it is not possible to have a uniform civil code and that's what I'm saying, that it's a dog whistle. And what Mr. Trivedi unfortunately said or Dr. Trivedi said actually validated that dog whistle. All right, one final word. Uh, I have less than one minute left, so 30 seconds each. In one sentence, why should India vote for Mr. Modi and for the NDA? And to Manish Tiwari, why should India vote for the Congress Party or the opposition? Sudan Chitrivedi first. In one sentence. Swapnu dekha tha kabhi wo aaj har dhadkan mein hai, ek naya bharat banane ka irada man mein hai. Or badh rahe hai hum pragat ki aur us raftar se kar raha hai vishu bhi humko naman us par se. Manish Tiwari. In one sentence. In one sentence, very simply, for democracy to survive, change is important. Change is the essence and the lifeblood of democracy, and that's why in 2024, a change is important. It is imperative, it is necessary, and it will happen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Sudanshu Trivedi and Manish Tiwari, please put your hands together for these two gentlemen from the BJP and the Congress. Thank you so much, Mr. Tiwari and Mr. Trivedi, for joining us on the broadcast on uh, this uh, evening. And thank you, Zaka, for that very engaging conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, a huge round of applause for the two gentlemen as we've had a very insightful and an engaging panel over there. But things will continue to get heated up over here as you see the addition of chairs uh, that are happening as far as this particular stage is concerned. The panel is expanding. So, moving ahead, we have that very exciting panel with four dynamic personalities who play vital roles in the political landscape. Please welcome Padma Vibhushan Awadi and a member of uh, the Rajya Sabha, Ms. Sonal Man Singh, Ms. Shushmita Dev, a member of parliament from the Trinamool Congress, 